obviously. Thank you all of you for coming. Um, today I'm going to talk about yarn. Um, that was like um, six months ago that Jordi proposed me to do a, a talk about Spark in, here in the meetup. And I've been to several meetups here, almost all of them. And something I, well, I, 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 I learned what was with what was Spark, I learned its possibilities, uh, I learned it was machine learning algorithms, how to integrate it with Cassandra, however. But uh, I missed some somehow how could you deploy it in a real world class of machines or something more introductory in, in terms of infrastructure. Uh, here uh Travit, we already have it uh, on production for, for good. And uh, and now I'm sure, and we're running on top of Yarn, so I'm share I'm here to share with you uh, my experiences and how I, what I learned. Uh, I hope that in in somehow this talk will be interesting for you. Um, that's me, not interesting. Um, but I want to well to just ask uh, who's of you are data scientists. Data scientist or um, persons in business, business one, software engineers, lots of software engineers. <laughs> what we do, software engineers, is solving problems, right? Uh, and during the several, well, during the last years, there's been quite a big problem that uh, became because uh, machines were getting more and more and more powerful. We had lots of cores, lots of CPUs, um, uh, lots of gigabytes of RAM. Uh, the disk, the spinning disk capacity is really good, it's really good cheap for what you can store in it. But um, it's read and, and write speed didn't evolve so fast. So if you buy a cheap spinning disk, uh, two terabytes of data, you have to wait uh, 3.5 hours from reading from the beginning to the end. If you have needs of accessing this data in a fast way, what we're problem solvers and what we'll do is just put more hard disk and read them. So what we'll get is read the same amount of data in less time. That's two, just two terabytes of data, but uh, big companies, uh, they need more than just six hard disks. In this case, it's just a picture of a data center in Google. But they, what they just have is machines connected one to each other, uh, working uh, together. And um, and actually, what they are doing is distributing computation, distributing computation, distributing uh, storage. Um, <coughs> that was Google. Um, one of the big players that came after Google made to the public what they were doing was uh, Hadoop. Hadoop um, is an open source uh, project that was based on what these guys were doing. Um, that solves, in a way, um, uh, storage and computation problems on, on really big, big amounts of data. Um, what it's basically, um, you have all your hardware, all your machines, and um, it puts on top of the of the hardware of the nodes that you have. If you have it, to, have them, to, them together, they are called a cluster. Uh, you put on top of it uh, a layer called HDFS. Uh, it's a kernel of Hadoop distributed file system. And what's actually it's a distributed file system. You put a file, and the file it, it gets split on on some blocks, and the blocks are distributed <coughs> across all the nodes. It provides a simple API, so you can do LS, you can list some directories, you can even read some file, the content of the file. On top of HDFS, it provides um, another layer, and it's actually a processing framework um, that allows a developer to, to code applications um, in, a, an, in a unit of computation called a job, map reduced job because it's not, it's called MapReduce. Um, this job, what it will do is just read 
data from 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 XDFS from the very nodes, it will execute something called MapReduce. It's a set of API provided by by the the framework that <coughs> reads the data. It executes a map function in a distributed way. It shuffles and then it is, it executes a, a reduced function in a distributed way, and then it writes that writes it down back to this. If you if you want to do something more complicated that just map reduce because the API is just that, you have to do another job. Read again, read uh, from the disk, execute and write down back to this. When you want to to put that in a well, in a, an architecture of uh, of machines, when how 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 does that get computed? Well, um, the computation it's it's made in the same nodes that the data is stored. Um, so if we have these nodes, uh, these will be the same nodes that are uh, are um, are storing the, the data, and every single of them, they will have. Uh, a thing called a slot, a slot that you can configure to execute maps or reduces. So uh, it's a distributed system that has a master and some slates. And um, when you choose um, for one node uh, how many maps and how many reduces uh, are able to be executed on that node, what you're doing is, in a way, getting tied that your application will uh, ask uh, for the, the, the job to run. It will execute the maps on the map slots, and then it will execute the resources on the resource <coughs> slots. As you can see, there's something that's not really wrong, not really good, because when we are executing the maps, um, we're wasting the, the resources slots. And when we are uh, executing the reduces, reduces, we're wasting the map slots. Um, you can think, yeah, but in a real world cluster, if there's multi-tenancy, lots of jobs executing uh, concurrently and all that stuff. But it's not ideal. In this case, this picture, it shows uh, um, uh, a period of time, actually it's six <coughs> hours of, uh, of our cluster here in Travit. And it shows um, the amount of reducers being executed and uh, the maps, amount of maps and amount of reducers being executed at, at a moment of time. Um, as you can see, here more or less, the proportion fits our configuration of, of slots. But here and here, here there's no reducers executing, and here there are no, well, there's some reducers that they, they miss. And they are actually Wasting, but there are CPUs that are completely evil, and that's not good because you want to take advantage of all your your power or, uh, at a time. Okay. So that's why um, the guys from Yahoo took uh, took the project, the project, and they created uh, Yarn. Um, what is basically Yarn? It's um, it's a way, well, it's an evolution of Hadoop, that what it does, it splits the, res, the cluster resource management manager from the processing framework. So uh, what it basically does is something, something uh, really common sense. It, it assumes that uh, machines have some cores and some memory. <coughs> so I mean, it's common sense. There's no slots, just cores and memory. And, uh, when we go to the machines, what we'll see is something like that. We'll have some master called resource manager that will act as a as a as a coordinator uh, of, of jobs, and then we'll have something called node manager that will be the responsible for doing the top job of executing things. They ha they have uh, uh, they provide uh, several amount of cores uh, and several amount of, what you like. in this case, I just write, wrote, wrote down eight cores and eight uh, gigabytes of RAM. When an application comes, um, for instance, 
one application with parallelism uh, six, and 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 asks one core and one gigabyte of RAM. What will do the the what will do YAR is create something called application master that will be responsible for executing this very application. This application master will alloc will ask the resource manager to allocate resources that we will in the end be called containers. In this case you can see we ask six, so one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And these very containers will eventually execute our maps or reduces. So there is no slot, it's just uh, CPUs and um, if another application com comes, for instance, <laughs> another one that um, that asks a parallelism of four, and, and and for each unit of parallelism, two cores and two gigabytes of RAM, it will happen the same. An application master will be created, and the containers will be allocated and execute whatever it has to execute. This whatever part is quite important because uh, with YARN, we'll be able to execute MapReduce on top of it, but also our beloved Spark. Um, it provides a, a set of APIs and several projects that have integrated with it, and it's a case of Spark and Impala and other kind of projects. <clears throat> um, so if before we were completely tied to to the MapReduce uh, uh, API, so if we wanted to take two files, execute something to those files, and, and eventually make a join, we had by 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 the API to go on the disk because we had to execute multiple MapReduces with the Spark. It has a more flexible API we would be able to do something like that. So by assumption, our, pro our project or our uh, application would go a bit faster, at, less than, at least a bit. <clears throat> um, so yeah, I'm going to, well, I'll prepare just a bit demo, just because uh, I, want to, I want you to, to see about a bit about <coughs> what's in there. Um, if you have, if you have questions, just ask in Catalan, Spanish, or in French. Um, so here we have the here in Travit we have a um, a pre-production cluster that I'm I'm sure that nobody is doing anything. No, I'm sure but it's not. It's free. Okay. So here. There's just um, a web page uh, for for HDFS. It's a web web uh, graphic inter user interface, Q Q I. And then <clears throat> you have uh, you have that that it's actually yeah. It's awful, I know, but it's all we have uh, right now. There's nothing ex being executed, but uh, we can see that there's some schedule, and uh, that's it. Um, but we're not here to 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 talk about yarn. Well, about um, reduce. We're here to talk about this part, right? So let's talk about Spark. Um, how many of you have? If you ever used Spark? Raise your hand. Wow, that's a lot of people. Um, I'm sure that that you all know what's that. It's just the most simple thing that you can do. I mean, it's just the <coughs> basic structure of, of, of a Spark job. There's a main that uh, argu some argument will go here and, and will be shared across the, 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 the project. There's some, some Spark pump and Spark context initialization. And eventually, well, you code some RDBs that they are the way, the API the, that provides Spark for executing things in a distributed way. 
on MapReduce, we have the Map and Reduce. Here we have something called RDBs. Some action will be executed over the RDBs that will trigger the executing the execution of uh, of our of our job, and eventually the Spark context will will stop and the job will finish uh, properly. When we try to to split um, this code, wait, this code uh, in two blocks, into execution blocks, you'll find something like that. That we have a main, and we have the RDDs. Okay, these RDDs, depending on um, how they are coded, um, they will be divided in something called stages. So, um, if you write down a complex project, there will be lots of stages. If you have a really simple one, it will be maybe just one. And in the stages, there will be some uh, tasks being executed. Um, these tasks, um, the amount of tasks that, um, that are executed per stage, it's, uh, it's provided well, it's defined providing the the how the files that you read are, how is your parallelism that you hold in, in your in your project, etc. But you, when you want to to put that structure on the machines or on a distribution, uh, yeah, on the architecture of machines, what you'll find is that we have something called the driver and something called executor. The driver, the driver will be the responsible for executing the main um, that we've seen at the very beginning of the code. And the driver also will be responsible for taking all the stages and tell the executor which tasks they have to run. So the executor will be the responsible for executing the, the tasks. Um, how does it fit? that uh, on top of YARN, the thing that I told you before. Um, so if you want to, to configure uh, Spark for running on, on YARN, what you'll need basically is well, put a set of configurations. Um, this one is the one that uh, tells where the Hadoop installation is. So Spark will be uh, able to find all the configurations of Hadoop, which are the machines where Hadoop is located, and all that stuff. Then you have to tell Yarn which uh, which is the um, the executable or the jar that contains all the Spark libraries, because it, it's running on a distributed way. It, it needs uh, it needs to know where is the code uh, of Spark that has to be executed, and if you want to recover, um, well, not to recover, but when when a job when a Spark job finishes, it dies, and if you want to uh, analyze uh, a finalized job, you, you have something called history server, that it's where all the logs and all the uh, all the all the data from the from a finished job is stored, and it's pretty useful. Um, then you'll have to tell how is your executor. Um, it's quite important deciding how many execute, how many, how, well, how how is um, how are the executors because it affects directly to to the performance of of, of your your job. You you will tell how many cores they are per executor, and when you tell that there's four cores in this case. You'll 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 tell to Yarn that um, there will be four tasks that will be executed concurrently. So an executor will be able to execute four tasks um, at a time. And then the memory that um, you you have to set the memory of of the executor. This memory will be shared across all the tasks and that's quite important because um, if there's for instance a job happen uh, a join happening all the tasks can take advantage of the same memory 
locating at the same point. Uh, so in a way, they will be able to use less memory than, than if we had to um, uh, copy all the, all the data across all, all, the, all the tasks. <coughs> when you want to execute a job, um, we use our beloved Spark Sumi that um, you provide your jar, the class, uh, where there's the main that we, we've seen before. You provide some arguments. And you have to tell which deployment mode on YARN will be executed. There's two types of, 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 of deployment mo modes, YARN Client and YARN Cluster. The first one, the YARN Client, what it does is um, you have a machine where your Spark Summit will be executed, and it creates the driver at the very at this very machine. This driver will uh, communicate to the YARN master that I want to execute something. I want these executors. Um, the resource manager will allocate the containers. And eventually, the drive will communicate with the containers that will become executors and complete the thing. I'm going to show you the little demo. I coded, I coded, coded um, something really simple. I don't know if you can see it. No, I cannot magnify it. Oh, yeah, I can. Um, there's my main, Spark configuration, and well, what I'm just doing is a word count. That's a simple job that you can do in Spark. Uh, uh, and you write it down to, to XDFS or disk. We compile this code, and we go to, to execute it into our client. We are here. We have our Spark installation here. Spark install. Wait, sorry. Where there's um, we have the bin folder, the configuration folder, where all of the configurations we <coughs> we talked before our set uh, and some other things. And if we go to bin, there's there's our Spark Summit, and I'm going to copy from my notebook. Um, the work count that I'm going to execute is. Um, will take um, some data from HDFS, and they will write it down back to the HDFS. So I'm going to show you in a way where, where is HDFS and what's in it. What's in it. So uh, Hadoop, Hadoop LS, and here we see well, some directories, and a file that I I put some years ago, some days ago. That is actually the Quixote. I, I love to do examples with the Quixote. Um, and what we'll do is um, read the Quixote and write that, write back to the uh, write to disk uh, how many uh, counts or how many appearances for each word there is. So what we'll do. Execute that. Wait. Uh, I don't do that because I want to see. So with the we call the Spark Summit. We call the class the main class. It's called Spark Meetup. You can see it right here. 
come through its Scala meetup, Scala Spark, Spark meetup. We'll execute with master yarn client. The jar is here. It will take the Quixote and it will write it back here. Quixote Oppo. I run. And now there's the demo fail, I'm sure. So Spark is starting. The driver is being executed in this very machine. We can go to the application master, it's actually a driver. And the job, as you can see, it's getting started. Some executors will be allocated. And eventually, the job will finish. And we'll go to the history server. That's where we can find the jobs that uh, finished. We can click here. And we can see that there's actually two stages. And each stage, it has two, ta two tasks each. Um, yeah. What about Yarn cluster? Yarn cluster, you, you execute um, the Spark summit. And uh, the driver is, it, it's being executed on the node manager. So there's a container located, and they will be running the, the driver. Um, then the driver will communicate to the resource manager that I want some resources, I want some executors. The resource manager will allocate them on, on JAR, and they will become executors, and eventually will, will complete. A demo. What time is it? We'll do the same thing. I'll do one. But I'm going to put yarn cluster instead of client. The job, it may um, take a bit more to get started because it needs yarn to allocate the, the driver, but when eventually it gets allocated, so it's still un, unassigned, it's get allocated and it's getting executed, executed at Hadoop all three. So the same thing. It's exactly the same thing, but um, we're having all our computation on the cluster and, and nothing um, on the client. The Spark shell, um, it only works on Yarn client because you need uh, an interaction with with uh, with the client directly. So that's it. <clears throat> then another thing I'm going, I want to tell about uh, Yarn and Spark on Yarn is when you decide to run a job, you have two options. <clears throat> You tell your job how many executors you want. That, uh, for instance, we say we put a number like I want ten executors. If we allocate this fixed number of executors before starting the job, and even if they are um, less used resources, the well. The resources allocated would be the ones that you you, you, you tell. So it, it's not really I mean it's not not really good because in this case we are wasting again our our beloved, beloved cluster. But in Yarn there's another option and I see I I think that in other cluster modes there there are uh, there's also the dynamic allocation where you. Well, you have to configure something called uh, shuffle service uh, on on map on on yarn because well, it, it needs to clean things behind, and then you enable dynamic allocation with this configuration, and you tell how many executors you want 
on, on a minimum uh, and on maximum because you don't want uh, a really top job to, to cannibalize all, all your clusters. When you put the same graphic like that, that's static, static, and the dyna dynamic will look something like something like that. I'm going to show you a demo. This job is finished, and we've seen well. The one I executed before, as you can see, is dynamic. Because the job started without the executors, and when the executor was needed, they will they were uh, created. If I do that, and I tell minus minus no executors, Good. Uh, is I don't know. Six. I change the output because otherwise it will fail. Ten. What it will do is first <coughs> create the application master because it's running on on the young, cl young cluster. <coughs> it's getting signed. Then the executors will need to be allocated. So you can see there's four executors, five, six, and then the job will start. And as you can see, there's yeah, wait, well, it's finished already. So let's go to the history server. Uh, yeah. As you can see, we we, we just choose six executors, we're saying a number, and these were created, but just three of them executed, actually executed something. So it's quite useful to have the dynamic resource allocation because it just allocates what, whatever it needs. And it uh, is allocate when there's not, not so much job to do. Um, yeah. So that's, that's it about Spark or Yarn. Here at Travit, um, we are actually deployed on, on top of Yarn. Uh, well, we are we were using uh, MapReduce uh, since uh, no, uh, 2010, I think. Yeah. Um, we used at first MapReduce 1.0. We evolved to Yarn, and and some some months, uh, well, weeks ago, we just adopted uh, Spark, and we have it running on top of, of Yarn. And several months ago, we, were, we already adopted Cloudera and Pala, that it's quite useful for us to, to query, query our warehouse in a fast way. What we do on, on our cluster, uh, it's basically, well, we provide the content for the search engine. We provide business intelligence tools for uh, for uh, making our our business better and more performant. We uh, create a re-engagement for the user, like sending mails and push notifications for uh, the new content it's re we receive, and we uh, optimize uh, the traffic by traffic in several networks for having more more users. Um, <coughs> that's my talk. Um, if you have any questions, they are welcome. I hope that you understood everything. <coughs> Sir, how can I start? So first, uh, did you add now in production some jobs in the Spark, uh, using Spark? Uh, and then how you orchestrate this one? How is uh, basically uh, you use Pussy, you use uh, Adobe tools, or how do you integrate this one? Um, we, we, we use a, a custom, a custom pipeline framework that we built uh, on, on Java, 
for, for executing MapReduces. And uh, we adopted this framework to, to execute our Spark jobs using uh, a library called Spark ER that is provided by, well, it's actually the one that when you execute Spark Summit, there's something called client uh, and client arguments where you can set all your, your parameters and will be and will send the, the, the executed uh, execution on GitHub. So we, we, adopt, we adapted our framework to, to run this cluster. But we, we uh, looked at other alternatives. There's something called job, his, job server. And I, I don't know, there's, 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 it's an, on GitHub. We evaluated it, but we, we just decided to, to adapt what, what we already had. So right now we can we have a tool that we can execute pipelines in MapReduce, like one MapReduce, another MapReduce, then Spark job, and some other MapReduces. Another one is how you manage the dependency. So all of the jars that you added, you create only a fast, a fast jar, so you have all of the dependencies in the cluster. That's uh, quite an issue. Uh, for MapReduce, well, the fact is that we, we build a a fat jar with Maven assembly, where there's like the jar and the lid with uh, all the dependencies uh, on a jar. Um, but right now, well, the thing is that if you want to do the same thing with um, with Spark, you have to execute the Maven shape, you know, the Maven shape plugin, and it's quite shitty because it, it makes a well. It, it uncompresses all your your jars and then it compresses again into a big five jar with all the with any dependency but all the code inside. Um, we're working on it for improving that. But yeah, we're we're using, we're, we're using fat jars, and, and actually the jars that we're sending they are quite quite big. That's thing that's work for. Uh, I mean, we have to work on on it. Related to that, which version of Scala you use for this one? 2.10, 2.11, and Ooh. then how you migrate it or not? Well, we just decided to 10. So we have we're using 2.10, and the spark we're using is 1.52 because well we we just integrated one before uh, 1.6 was released. So right now it's okay for us, but but yeah, I mean <coughs> the thing that. And, and it's, all, it's something that um, that when when uh, when Joan showed the graphic of the adoption of, of Spark clusters, something that brings me, ring me uh, the bell is that um, when you want to change the version, it's quite easy. When you want to uh, um, upgrade the version of a cluster of Hadoop, you 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 want to kill yourself. But if you want to change the version of Spark. It's a bit more easy. You just have to check that all your jobs are working properly, and that's it. So I'm, I'm hope more hopeful for that in our future of the upgrades. <coughs> you were speaking about stages and tasks. Yeah. Can you once again explain the, in your example what would be different stages, what would be different tasks? The, the example of work. Yeah. For example. Well, there's just two. Um, Uh, oh fuck! <laughs> Where are they? Here. Spark me that. So here, <coughs> there's two stages. It's actually one that that it's a map. So it's this one. And the other is the reduce and save as text file. Um, you can see here the two stages, uh, and and normally it shows here a, a graph uh, where uh, you can see in a visual way how how it's executed and which are the dependencies between stages. I don't know why it didn't print anything. Sure. 
But if you have uh, more complex jobs, and especially if you are using uh, data frames uh, with tungsten, uh, it creates like automatically it creates lots of uh, stages and really complicated process that I don't really understand. Did I? Yeah. Another question: How to correlate number of clusters, number of machines you have in a cluster, with number of executors to assign to a cluster? Number of machines and number of applications. Uh, number of executors. executors. Ah. Um, well, um, if you have, um, and that's something that I'm not an expert, but uh, if you have um, uh, machines of four of uh, sixteen gigabytes of RAM, if you choose uh, executors of uh, nine, you'll be wrong because. Um, you will just be able to execute one executor per machine, right? No, no, no. So yeah, yeah, that's it. So the thing is, what you when you have your machines, you you'll have to choose how big is your executor for having lots of executors, like a, like a puzzle, you know, like having a puzzle inside the machine of like of executors. Otherwise, you will be wasting resources. Yeah, do you have a reply? Yeah, you're okay, but yeah, just you will just assign number of executors. You specify their size. Um, if I'm honest, um, Spark it's it's mainly uh, it's mainly uh, in memory. So the bigger the executors, the faster it will go. So you have to take your job, uh, put. If you have, well, if you if you can uh, have bigger uh, have bigger executors, and then um, assume that the more executors, the faster it will go. Yeah. Uh, there's no magic. I mean, there's no silver bullet of choosing which you need more or, or less executors. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Uh, Compare the different serializer. Because uh, the Java by default is very. Uh, I actually cannot say numbers, but we, we evaluated uh, Creo and Java. Creo was going faster, yeah. Do you have any problem with Creo? Just defining the, which classes are, are, uh, are affected by the serialization, and that's it. Ah, yeah, maybe shape. So, um, are you using any sort of um, framework such as vertex or spring with the Java jobs? Um, for dependency injection? Yes. I'm running problems with spring, for example. Where spring is in some dependencies, yeah. spring rest that break against Spark dependencies, which are jetty and Java. Mm, not yet. Not we, we use for our uh, pipeline structure uh, uh, Juice, Google Juice. It's a dependency injection from Google, um, but right now, the way we code our our Spark jobs, it doesn't use uh, it doesn't use dependency injection. So we, we are now on a start of learning how how it, how, it, how we can program better on 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 Scala, well, on Scala and, and Spark. Yeah. We're learning. Yeah. Did everyone learn something new today? I hope so. Well, thank you. Uh, downstairs, uh, this, this, there, there's the kitchen. There will be some beers and some sandwiches. So, I don't know. Talk to each other, create a network. <laughs> yeah. <laughs>